Welcome back friends, thanks for being here. Buckle up and subscribe because it's going to be fun. Today we're going to take a look at a single lever iambic paddle and a USB Morse code keyboard interface. Coming right up. All right, let's go for the amazing high contrast surface. This is an old, uh, came with the Samsung Galaxy phone. It is just the little case that the earbud shipped in and I thought it would be a great little box to repurpose for this task here. Inside of this guy is all the magic that converts your Morse code signals into um, keyboard keystrokes, as you can hear. And that's a little tight. The little, uh, case connector thing also helps keep the case closed. So inside is a Teensy 2.0. It's a little bit like an Arduino, only it's smaller. And a stereo audio jack and a little tiny speaker. And then just a regular off-the-shelf USB cable. All fits in there nice and neat. Some nice little soldering instructions. All the details are laid out in the GitHub repository that I'll have linked down below. So nibbled a little hole out for the USB cable, nibbled a little hole out for the audio interface, and then I had to nibble a little hole out there for the audio interface to stick through also. And then it all just fits in together nicely. Give this guy a little turn to tighten it up, not too much because you're just turning into plastic. And now it won't come open as you're moving around in life. And then this is just a standard wire spaghetti mess. It's a standard audio cable on both ends, stereo pass through, and this is a single lever Morse code key. This is actually a pretty cool little key. Um, nothing terribly special about it other than it just seems like they did a nice little job of putting it together. Two little plastic pieces there, little pieces of acrylic. They look like they could be dice, but they don't have any markings on them. Maybe having a set of dice there would be pretty cool. A couple of uh, studs, and this is just a screw bearing acorn nut combination and then you move it back and forth the only problem that i would have with this thing is that there's no weight to it and maybe you could get away with just adding some weight into the base but uh i just wind up using it two-handed one hand to hold it in place and then one hand to do all the magic so let's plug in the audio cable to the usb audio cable to the morse code key the audio cable to the teensy interface adapter you heard a little bit of a beep there it also has a little bit of a light on it there it is. Yep. Probably won't be able to see it on camera too well, but inside... Yep, there it is. There's a little tiny LED light that lights up whenever you press a keystroke. And let's uh, bring up a little text editor on screen here and take a look at how you interface the whole thing. And how you interface the whole thing is really quite simple. You take the USB plug and you plug it into your USB port. And you're done. All right, so right out of the gate, I bet you're wondering what to do about the elephant in the room, the space character in Morse code. Uh, there isn't one. Usually it's just you stop transmitting for a little bit of time. I haven't found a good way to figure this out in the source code. I also didn't write the original source code, uh, but I think there might be a way that we could do a contribution to the code that would notice that you hadn't sent any code for a while, insert a space, and then stop listening until you actually get a real letter again in the future. Otherwise, it'll just keep repeating the space character until your screen buffer fills up, and that's not really a good thing, especially on a modern computer today. It's a pretty big file. So that's something that maybe somebody could contribute. Uh, take a look at the GitHub repository, make a pull request. I'd be happy to test it out. Uh, getting right down to it, having it work as a keyboard, like I showed you before, you just plug it into the USB port, and it shows up as a keyboard device. Your computer's smart enough to know what a keyboard device is. It doesn't need any special drivers, nothing, nothing fancy going on. The... Uh, Morse code key is plugged into the keyboard interface adapter, which is plugged into the USB port on the laptop. And I've got a text editor on the screen. And so I click over on the text editor and you should be able to hear a faint da sound or da da for M because I held it down for too long.
So not too bad. It's a good way to practice your code, make sure it's actually working. And I'm kind of lazy. I'd probably just run the whole thing together just to get the practice done, just to get the feedback that I did it right, that something understood that I did the thing right and that we're good to go. So there it is. Works pretty well, does the thing. Uh, another thing that you can do if you're trying to practice is just do some scales. Send five A's, send five B's, or not. Send five B's. All the way through the alphabet. And uh, it notices that it doesn't know that you did the right keyboard input. So if I do a bunch of messages, it gives me an error beep, which is a different sound than the side tone, and doesn't display anything on the screen. And if you go too fast, it makes a huge mess. Doesn't know what to do, and it throws in a couple of errors every so often, and that's what it got out of the little uh, Ben's Best Bent Wire song. So take a look at the uh, source code repository, link below in the description. Uh, but it is out on GitHub under my user ID, temporarily offline, and the USB paddle repository. Uh, there's a link to the original article back in 2012 when this thing was first put out. A uh, little bit of information on how to build it, and obviously the source code itself. So thanks for being awesome. Thanks for being here. If you like this video, click that like button. If you didn't like it, click the dislike button. If you have any comments or feedback, I'd appreciate it down below. And of course, if you want to contribute to the source code, there she blows. Thanks a lot.